thank you for your time today. And uh, as we've said, um, we'll go through this uh, multi-speed seamless shift transmissions uh, uh, that we offer uh, at VOSIS and perhaps some of the reasons that we, we, we offer these uh, types of transmissions. So, assuming I press the right button. Here we are. A little introduction beyond what's already been said uh, about VOSIS. Uh, we were formed in 2006. Uh, as uh, John alluded to in his presentation, the, the founding members were uh, a core team on the Bugatti Veyron project, <coughs> which uh, leads on to us being the foundation of our business being in transmission and driveline software. Uh, this is done both independently and also with our partner company, Early Congraziano, who you can see in the top right hand corner. Uh, together, uh, we've worked on programs to production uh, for ourselves with the software uh, for uh, vehicles like the McLaren MP412C, down here at the bottom and the Lamborghini 7-speed uh, AMT system. In addition to that, I need to go that way. Ah, okay, thank you. Uh, so yeah, in addition to the software, we're also involved in uh, electronic hardware uh, design, so transmission controllers, uh, data loggers, and also controllers for uh, uh, electric machines to drive uh, transmission pumps, typically, as uh, we move away from engine-driven pumps uh, and move into the future with higher hybridization and electrification of, uh, of vehicles. Okay, so to set the scene, I think the scene's been pretty well set with uh, the previous uh, presentations. Uh, the, the main driver really is um, for uh, reducing CO2, and we've seen how those trends are, are reducing. We've got to hit the 95 grams per kilometer uh, very soon. Uh, and so when we're looking uh, to ways of achieving this for your fleet average, uh, hybrid and electric vehicles are, of course, uh, a very strong way to do this. And uh, from the point of view of powertrain transmission systems, it's a very exciting time to be working in uh, the, this field uh, because there are so many different competing solutions. Uh, and we've been through wh why we need to do different uh, analyses to find out which of those are the best. Uh, and we've looked at uh, different topologies. Uh, and I think uh, in this presentation, I'll concentrate a little bit more on the, the number of speeds and how that can help with the electrification as well. So key market drivers then, when we're going for hybridization, are uh, cost, packaging and weight. Of course, we're adding a significant addition, additional cost, uh, adding a hybrid uh, function, in particular battery cost. Um, but other drivers sort of in the positive direction are efficiency, uh, good drivability. Uh, we want to see a good electric range or assistance from the, the hybrid system. Uh, the, a good CO2 benefit, for the reasons we all know very well. Uh, and improve performance, because as we said, we don't want to just have dull vehicles that we drive in the future. We want them still to be exciting, and uh, uh, that's, that's also got to be uh, a market driver as well. So there are uh, different uh, transmission solutions, and um, a multi-speed transmission is certainly more complex uh, than a single speed, which is perhaps why we've seen single speeds in, uh, in the main. Uh, and so you can see that once we go to multi-speed, perhaps the cost it's also going to be a little bit more difficult on packaging and weight. But also, uh, when we talk about multi-speed transmissions, we can improve all the, the features that we've highlighted uh, on the right-hand side. And I hope to be able to show as we go through the presentation that perhaps the negative aspects uh, or the positive aspect, aspects outweigh uh, the negative. And uh, so we'll try and show that how that uh, can be seen. So where does the need for multi-speed come from? Uh, we had an interesting discussion already about the number of speeds uh, for automated gearboxes, starting in the past down with three-speed automatics, moving through to today's technology, which is typically sort of seven or eight-speed for, automa uh, for automatics, uh, dual-clutch and also uh, single-clutch automated manuals. And in the future, we know um, OEMs have in development nine and ten-speed DCTs. And uh, of course, whether this is necessary or not is uh, uh, a moot point to some degree. They are happening. It may be marketing. Uh, at Vosis and uh, certainly with our partner company as well, uh, we see the ratio spread is perhaps more significant than the number of ratios, but this is the trend that we see. And when we consider um, electric uh, transmissions or hybrid transmissions, uh, we see today's technology is typically single speed. It's a good entry point into the market and it's the, the simplest, certainly. Uh, but we already see that this is moving into two speed and maybe even more. A uh, particular example being the BMW i8 with a, a two-speed uh, front electric axle. So then why move from single speed to, to multi-speed? Uh, so single speed, a uh, very cheap solution, and of course, uh, yeah, the, the very, very much so the, 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 uh, the simplest solution. Uh, in terms of cost, that would assume a fixed cost for the motor, inverter, and battery. But as soon as you move to multi-speed multi and you can get the efficiency uh, 
benefits of that. Uh, you can potentially reduce the size of your battery for the equivalent range, which mitigates against the cost. Uh, and also, if you have a wider operating envelope because you've got multiple speeds, you can also perhaps reduce the size of your motor and then, of course, the associated electronics. Motors also, it, as it says here, uh, were assumed to be efficient enough over the full operating range. But of course, like anything, even though they are much more efficient than uh, combustion engines, uh, they still have uh, a sweet spot of operation. And once you move away from there, you could be 10, 20, maybe even 30% below that. So there are significant gains to be had if you can uh, use the motor more of the time in the more efficient region. Uh, and of course, then the other uh, limit uh, for single speed is the compromise between gradeability and top speed, which is uh, f fairly obvious. And so, yeah, as soon as you go to these multiple speed transmissions, you can get better gradeability and top speed for your uh, electric vehicle and this wider range of operation. So therefore, by adding transmission technology, uh, you can help to reduce your energy consumption over a, maybe a legislative cycle. You can improve the performance, improve marketability. Uh, and also, one of the things we've seen a lot of interest in is you can make 48 volt solutions more accessible. So typically these are much lower power, but also much, much lower cost. Uh, and with uh, novel transmission systems with more than one speed, uh, you can actually utilize them more and make them a very useful uh, solution for, for hybrid technology. So then looking at the philosophy that we uh, applied at VOSIS when looking at uh, multiple speed uh, transmissions, uh, uh, first thing to say is there are a lot of alternative offerings, so it's a very exciting time. Uh, but as soon as you go from single speed, you add a lot of new mechanical parts. And we see a lot of uh, developments with multiple clutches, hydraulic actuation, and synchronizers. Uh, maybe things that are needed for more traditional vehicles, but perhaps uh, with uh, some in-depth look at the electric system, you can try and do away with quite a lot of that. And that's the approach that we've used uh, at VOSIS. And first, I'd like to go through uh, two concepts that we have. Uh, simply called two-said, which is a two-speed electric drive, and four-said, which is a four-speed electric drive. And you'll notice on the four-speed, whoops, uh, we have uh, two electric machines. So the two-speed here is for a single uh, electric machine drive, and the four-said for one with our two electric machines. And yes, as it says in, in red, uh, minimizing the additional cost and complexity. <coughs> so first of all, just to give you uh, a high-level summary of, of two-said, uh, as it's known. So it's a patented two-speed power-shifting uh, transmission. Design is very much for maximum efficiency, a uh, very simple mechanical layout internally, uh, and uh, reduced number of gear meshes between uh, motor and wheel. Uh, so we have the optimized cost and park count. There's an integral park lock function without any additional components, which we can look at on the following slide. Um, a very compact overall dimension, uh, especially considering uh, for this transmission, the peak torque is 250 Newton meters, uh, and in particular application for the derivative shown here with a motor with uh, 210 kilowatts and maximum speed of 15,000 uh, RPM uh, coming in at 45 kilos. This is actually the third generation of uh, the, this transmission. We started with a, a proof of concept, which was a much more cumbersome affair, uh, but proved that we were able to uh, make a two-speed power shifting transmission. First of all, as we'll highlight here, with just a single actuator, uh, which rotates a barrel cam, which does the, the actuation, which we've shown on the following slide. And it's, it's just, so the first generation was already in a vehicle, and now we're working more closely with a major European OEM, uh, and that's now going through durability testing on a rig, and is, will imminently be ready for in-vehicle testing in this current guise. So just uh, very brief details uh, showing the stick diagram um, for first gear and second gear. So firstly, looking at, at first gear, of course, you can see the electric machine here driving directly onto uh, the input shaft. Uh, first gear driven gear is uh, coupled directly to the, to the shaft, whereas second gear idles and uh, will transmit torque if this friction clutch is closed. So looking at first in first gear, drive comes directly through here and out through uh, the differential shown very simply here. But the driven gear of first gear is actually running on top of a spread clutch. And with this locking ring in the position shown here, uh, it's uh, disengaged, so the spread clutch is acting as a true one-way clutch. So this allows us to drive in first gear, but of course, because the, the sprag clutch will overspeed, it means we don't get regeneration and we can't get reverse gear. So the reason to have the locking, the locking ring is when it moves to the right, as we show here, it fully locks out the sprag clutch, and now this is operating like a true single speed transmission. Now we can have electric reverse, uh, and we can get regenerate or recuperation in first gear. But in this condition, we cannot drive in second gear, because if we close the clutch, uh, then we will bind the transmission completely, which gives us our power clock function. Uh, so, to change from first to second gear, first of all, the locking ring must be disengaged, as shown on the right-hand side, 
and the, the clutch can then be closed, which overspeeds first gear, and of course then you have your two shifts. Uh, with the, coupled with the transmission control that we've developed, you can then get power shifting for upshifts, downshifts, uh, power on and power off shifts. <coughs> So that was a quick overview of uh, two said. So next we look at the uh, the four said, the four speed electric drive. Uh, and as I mentioned before, this is for vehicles with two traction uh, motors. Um, we didn't mention the predicted energy consumption reduction over the NEDC for the two said. That's around 8% from simulation. That's done in collaboration with uh, the university we work with, Surrey University. Uh, but also they've run a simulation uh, for this transmission concept um, where we're able to use uh, the two motors in combination in as we mentioned it now, um, seven different gear combinations shown here. So we have four single gears we can uh, operate in. So when we just use one motor, uh, so you've got first, second, third, and fourth. Uh, first and third are associated with one motor, second and fourth with the other. But then when you drive with both, gear, uh, both motors together, you can drive in combinations of those gears. So you can drive in first and second gear together. So the odd motor is driving first gear, the even motor is driving second gear. And then you've got the combination of second and third together, and also third and fourth. There could be the combination of first and fourth, but because of the actuation system we have, which is a barrel cam uh, driven by a single uh, actuator again, uh, we, we don't have the profile to, to give that operating condition. But perhaps that's a, you know, when we do the simulation activities, <coughs> the number of times you would want to use that combination is very low. You're talking fractions of a percent, so you're hardly losing anything there. Okay, so just a little bit more. Um, it's a very, very simple gearbox, and we'll see that on the stick diagram on the, on the uh, the next uh, slide, uh, more, more simple than a manual. No clutches, no synchronizers. All the power shifting is done by handling the torque between the two electric machines uh, and uh, using the electric machines themselves to synchronize to the new shaft speed that you need. Uh, this is a much uh, smaller uh, gearbox with an uh, input uh, torque of 75 newton meters per machine, so a combined total of 150, um, and a combined power of 70 kilowatts. Weight for this is approximately uh, 24 kilos. And this is currently running in the demonstrator vehicle that you can see uh, on the, the bottom uh, right-hand side there. Uh, it's a very big vehicle. It's around 2.4 tonnes. But even with such a big vehicle, and the reason we use the vehicle is because it was already electrified, and so it gave us a very good um, way of proving the transmission concept without having to go through, uh, let's say, the hassle of um, converting a vehicle from a <laughs> combustion engine vehicle. But even in this uh, slightly oversized vehicle, we are able to power this uh, and, and do test drives uh, even though we only have uh, a very low power. So already showing how we can make the, the electric part of the drivetrain more accessible. So again, uh, looking at the stick diagram, just to try and uh, show hopefully a little bit more clearly uh, exactly how this works. Uh, so again, uh, we have the odd input machine uh, at the top here, uh, and this would be first and third gear. And then separately on a, a separate input shaft, we have the uh, even input shaft, so second and fourth gear. Uh, we have the single barrel cam here shown uh, with the position <coughs> both in neutral. Uh, so with both in neutral, the, the dog engagement devices are also uh, both in their neutral position. And as I advance the slide, it will show the barrel cam indexing round and the selection of first gear. So in here now, we are using the odd input motor, as it's, as it's called here, uh, to provide the drive. So the even input machine is still completely disconnected. But a more common way to, to launch the vehicle would be in a full performance mode. So you'd want to use both motors together. Excuse me. So as we uh, index the barrel cam round further, uh, you can see that the second gear engagement device engages second gear. And now we have both uh, first and second gear working together uh, to provide the overall tractive uh, effort. Um, we did have a, a more extensive um, presentation where we go through all the, the positions, but I don't think it's so necessary. You can see as the barrel cam goes through, you can then drive in every combination of the two gears, as I mentioned before, so first and second, second and third, third and fourth, or any of the individual uh, four gears. So we mentioned that, uh, or I mentioned that uh, multi-speed transmissions can be more efficient, so we try and show that uh, graphically as best as we can in PowerPoint. So uh, first we show uh, the a typical operating envelope for a uh, 70 kilowatt total uh, single speed machine, uh, where you've got the constant power curve here, obviously and the, uh, the limitation in torque and the limitation in top speed according to the ratio that you choose. We can superimpose over that a uh, motor efficiency map 
Uh, and we could, as we can see, uh, there's a large area in red, so we know that, uh, that it's very efficient in a very wide range of operating regions. But you can still see that we're dropping from above 90%, <coughs> which is sort of within this red line that's superimposed, whereas the rest, uh, you know, you, you drop away a little bit, and perhaps significantly when you compare it to multiple speeds. So first of all, to uh, uh, sort of blow away the whole map, and to show the, the sweet spot, let's say, or an approximate sweet spot where you're above 90% efficiency of the electric machine itself. So then we can move on to a two-speed example with the same uh, power. Of course, you get the wider operating envelope, higher torque at low speed and higher vehicle speed uh, for a two-speed, so relatively obvious. Uh, and now you can do the same exercise, and the, the, uh, the high efficiency region is, of course, much expanded, so you can see here just a very simple graphic representation of why we expect the 8% efficiency over the NEDC cycle. We can do the same uh, for the four speed. So here uh, it looks a, a little bit more complex. We have the seven gear combinations uh, which are highlighted on the right. So first on its own, second, third and fourth and also the, the, the three gear combinations, first and second, second and third, third and fourth. And so because of that we end up with two constant power lines. So we have the 70 kilowatt total on the higher line but when we're using the motors on their own, uh, it's, the, it's the lower line. And of course, you, you're limiting the torque and the speed according to which gear combination or which single gear you're using. So again, uh, using the magic of PowerPoint, we can superimpose uh, the uh, high efficiency regions. So this time we have seven of them. And again, now you can see an even wider operation zone uh, for uh, the, the four said um, system, which then tallies in with what we predict as the 15% improvement. Uh, one thing I forgot to mention on the slide about uh, the, the efficiency improvement was that 15% has been done by Surrey University, which is in collaboration with ourselves. Uh, separately, uh, a university in Germany, Darmstadt University, were assessing a very similar layout, <coughs> almost identical. Uh, the only difference was they had their third and fourth gear ratio as the same, uh, and they also uh, predict a 15% improvement. So we're always in the same ballpark in terms of uh, uh, what we think we can achieve with this particular transmission. So to uh, summarise what's been uh, said so far, um, the solutions sh shown so far are ideal for electric vehicles, so we looked at two speed and four speed, either with a single electric machine or two electric machines. So that can either be a pure electric or could be an electric axle or a through the road four wheel, four -wheel drive system, much like uh, Jerome mentioned uh, this morning. Uh, for electric vehicles, uh, we think that power shifting is critical. Um, if you're going to go to multiple speed, we think you need to be able to make it power shift so you can have the seamless drive. The, we don't expect there to be a driver interaction to change gear from first to second, so they won't expect a torque interruption. So for these, it's absolutely critical that we can, we can manage the shifting. For hybrid vehicles, though, uh, we think that packaging could be more of a concern when the hybridization is on the, the same axle. Uh, so integration of the electric machine into the gearbox casing uh, is more of a concern and perhaps the technology for the, the shifting for the electric side is, doesn't need to be power shifting because you can provide support from the combustion engine for those shifts. And again, we use the BMW i8 as an example, uh, which has a, a, an automated manual arrangement for its, for its front axle. So an alternative solution is needed for these, uh, where we can integrate uh, the different ratios for uh, the combustion engine. <coughs> So at this point, I introduce uh, uh, the fi final gearbox concept that we've got today, which is called OG Eco. Uh, it's a hybrid power shifting automated manual, um, which you can see uh, an image of on the right. We have a very simple two shaft layout for the six speed AMT in parallel with an electric motor uh, with its own two speed gearbox. But this time the two speed gearbox is an AMT. Uh, it keeps the complexity down, uh, keeps the packaging uh, very good for this, uh, for this transmission. And that um, gearbox has been taken uh, and uh, at the UK we're based at Myra and we have this vehicle running uh, to demonstrate the technology and that's available to demonstrate and has been for the last uh, few months. So it's a patented uh, concept and the idea here was to minimise the, the on cost and to reduce the complexity and be a better packaging when we compare it to a hybrid DCT. Uh, we've uh, well, so previous speakers have spoken about the difference between dual clutch and a single clutch AMT and we see very small market penetration for uh, automated manual transmission compared to dual clutch. Um, but when you consider the, uh, just mechanically, uh, an AMT is uh, more efficient, it's simpler, and it's easier to package. So why isn't it used compared to a DCT? The answer is simple. Uh, the gear shift quality isn't good enough. 
Um, but considering first uh, th those other benefits, um, we've done some benchmarking on this vehicle. Um, we've taken it in its completely original guise and put it on the rolling road and completed the NEDC cycle. Uh, and we have a benchmark figure then. <coughs> then once we did the, uh, the fit of the hybrid system, we ran the uh, rolling road test again. Uh, this time with the hybrid system turned off, so we've got to imagine uh, this OG Eco concept without the electric machine. Uh, we, we ran the test again uh, in the same conditions, uh, and we saw a 6% reduction in CO2 just from the mechanical change with the gearbox. So much, much simpler, so there's less drag in the gearbox, there's no drag from the wet clutch, uh, and so on and so forth. And again, this ties in with the simulation activities and has allowed us to, again, in conjunction with Surrey University, uh, develop a model that they can run simulations so we can now, uh, with these figures, help to develop hybrid strategies to show how much additional benefit you can get from hybridization um, and, and so on. So I did mention the gear shift quality. Um, of course, around city driving with a torque interruption during the shifts, you get the head nod. The head nod is very, very badly perceived. So if we can use the hybridization to overcome those problems, uh, then we have a solution, as we've said before, with all the other benefits. Um, so if you can overcome the gear shift problem, then why wouldn't you use an automated manual in comparison to a dual clutch be because of all the other things? Of course, the power of the electric machine isn't the same as the combustion engine. Uh, so we can see here uh, we have 430 kilowatts versus 120. So we're not able to infill completely in all operating regimes. But for round town city driving and uh, when you start, uh, you know, so let's say, uh, some extra urban driving but not very high speed and not track, uh, we are able to match that DCT quality and that's what we aim to show uh, not only from the product design but also from uh, being able to sit in the car and experience it and then as you transition to track driving, uh, the one criticism that can be levelled with the DCT is it's an emotionless shift, it's too smooth and so in DCTs they engineer in some torque interruption Whereas we get that for free, uh, uh, it's, it's compulsory, um, but we mitigate against that with the very fast shift times, which also is in some way simulated with the DCT. So we still get this best in class and emotional shift for track driving. So there's a few more details about the vehicle at the top, um, but just want to quickly run through this slide to show uh, that we, we do have all the normal hybrid functions you would expect. It wasn't the primary purpose of the demonstrator vehicle, but um, we found more and more that it's useful to show this during demonstrations to give a more uh, over, overall picture. So of course we need the torque infill uh, during shifting uh, to give our uh, gear shift quality performance. Uh, we can also have electric boost for performance enhancements, uh, kinetic energy recovery during braking or coast, um, uh, electric vehicle only driving mode. In fact, in reverse it must be because we have no mechanical reverse and the machine and the ratios are chosen such uh, that we can perform everything that we need to in electric vehicle driving only, so gradeability and uh, uh, suitable launch performance. And then we can also manage uh, battery state of charge um, uh, uh, with the, uh, the electric machine as well. And because we can uh, input couple the motor, not just output couple, so output couple for electric boost, and for uh, torque infill and so on, we can also crank the engine. So, um, st started this presentation saying it's multi-speed transmission, so the reason we went for a multi-speed electric part of this transmission uh, is hopefully illustrated briefly on this slide. So we have the very high uh, torque uh, regime that we need at low speed. As I mentioned before, we need to have uh, launch performance and gradeability with the electric mode only. Also in first gear, or the one to two upshift, we need to have a very high torque capability to infill that shift uh, as much as possible, which is the, typically the, obviously the worst rated A and T shift. Then you have your more typical driving regime in the centre here, where we want to still be able to do torque infill and normal hybrid driving. But we also don't want to uh, uncouple the, mach the machine in high speed driving. We still want to be able to do battery state of charge management and recuperation and so on. And as we mentioned before, at high speed there's a big opportunity for recuperation. So with the single speed, uh, with the, uh, the power that we have, uh, we were limited by the red curve, but then if you superimpose a two speed, but then we can uh, incorporate all of these regions. So again, making the system more accessible by using multiple speeds. So again, to the stick diagram, just to show in a little bit more detail, um, we have the electric machine shown here, uh, associated with a two speed gearbox. On the left here, an epicyclic reduction. So with this dog engagement device, we can either drive directly uh, through this gear or through a three-to-one reduction if we first go through the epicyclic gear set. That then runs through third gear 
and then can drive the wheels directly as long as this second uh, dog engagement device is engaged. And this is when we're output coupled and so ready for torque infill shifting, ready for electric <coughs> boost, electric drive, and is the normal state for running the transmission. So then if we select uh, first gear, uh, you can see this uh, synchronizer now moving to the right and we're showing the torque path through from the combustion engine and out in first gear. If we move on to do a shift, still with the electric motor disconnected, you can see that the first thing we would have to do is open the clutch, torque disappears, select second gear, shown here, and now we go through second gear. If then, in our PowerPoint fashion, uh, select one of the gears from the electric motor, we can see now we're in first gear, and we just illustrate that with the yellow line, and now we're driving through the first gear on the electric machine, directly through third gear, which is idling, <coughs> and then out. So now we can sum the torques, um, or share the torques between the combustion engine and the electric machine, um, but also when we make uh, a gear shift, we can uh, boost the torque to the wheels using the, machine, the electric motor, so as we make a second to third gear shift, we lose the torque from the combustion engine, we use additional torque from the electric machine, and then we can drive again in third gear. The final thing to show <coughs> is um, the input coupled state, as I called it before. Here, you have to have uh, the third gear synchronizer engaged to the left, but also we need to uncouple the dog engagement device here, and now we have a direct connection between the combustion engine and the electric machine. So we can either charge the motor um, with the engine while idling, uh, or we can crank the engine if the engine is stopped. So one thing you'll notice is the, uh, the vehicle that has been chosen for the demonstrator is quite, quite exotic, uh, and that's deliberate because uh, Erlich and Graziano's primary market is in that market sector for transaxle transmissions. But we've also seen uh, a lot of interest uh, for this transmission technology and this concept uh, for more mass market vehicles. Uh, and so here you could well imagine that we could have a transverse application, perhaps on the rear axle, uh, which is not untypical, and you can have a, a vastly reduced set of gears uh, uh, in association with the combustion engine, but still maintain a two-speed arrangement of some device uh, with the, the electric motor. In fact, this was done in conjunction with an OEM as a, as a concept study. Unfortunately, it didn't go any further than that but one of their requirements was for it to be power shifting on the electric motor side as well, which may or may not be necessary depending on uh, uh, you know, the target vehicle, the target DNA, and, and so on. Um, but we have, we have seen with uh, uh, other, other leads uh, for, like, for much stronger uh, hybridization, so the ratio of the power of the engine and the electric machine is closer to one, um, and <coughs> This type of vehicle with a stronger electrification moving forward, maybe in years 2020 and beyond, um, increasing volumes maybe from 1,000 to 50,000. These are the sorts of leads we see, uh, and that's very good for, for our business because it's volumes that we're interested in, and so are our parent company. Um, the performance uh, can be assessed for these, uh, let's say, less exotic vehicles uh, because we can artificially uh, limit the torque to the combustion engine so we can show what the torque infill will be like when the ratio is closer to one to one between the combustion engine and the motor, uh, as, as shown by that uh, <laughs> simple equation. Uh, we maintain the very good packaging. It's a very modular layout. It's very simple. You know, it's a very simple two-shaft layout, very uh, efficient because we've only got uh, uh, two gear meshes um, when you're driving through a gear. And so we, we think that even though, uh, yeah, as I've said, the uh, demonstrator vehicle today is very exotic, it's very applicable to more mass market solutions. So uh, close to the end now, just uh, to in summary then, um, regardless of whether the, the, hybrid is, the application is hybrid or pure electric or you're doing an electric axle, to get the most from your electric powertrain, of course, you need a multi-speed transmission. Uh, the question is whether that adds too much cost or not, and so uh, calculations can be done whether you can save on the total powertrain cost because you can reduce the size of the electric part of the powertrain, which is by far the most expensive. Um, and we all hope that we can show some tech, some uh, solutions with um, uh, a reduced on cost and good efficiency from the mechanical side of the gearbox, coupled with improved performance as well. Using multi-speeds uh, keeps your 48 volt uh, solution more accessible. Even with the four speed and the twin drive, you can use two of them together and maybe even have uh, a pure electric vehicle with that. And one thing I haven't really had a chance to touch on today is the transmission control. Of course, as I said at the very beginning, Vosis um, is core business really is transmission control software. 
Uh, and of course, we've used all our common practices and procedures to develop the software for these technologies as well. So it's worth saying that uh, everything is done with production intent, software side and hardware side, uh, including for uh, best practice for safety. Um, and um, yeah, that brings me to the end. So thank you very much for your time.